just got home, just got off work. We're thinking it's an animal, and he said, no, my name's Robert. Oh, sh there's a dude in my room. Shots, shots fired, shots fired. On the night of June 18th, 2023, the Cudahy Police Department in Wisconsin received a strange series of 911 calls coming from a block of houses on Carpenter Avenue. Officers show up on scene to speak with witnesses, and what they reveal is completely bizarre. What's going on? Okay, so across the street, not... Okay, so we're we're facing that way. 50 or okay? 29 on There's the a initial duplex caller. It's got next to a small house. Okay, so upstairs they started. They somebody smashed out from the second floor, jumped onto the small roof, and ran. Okay, so, so there might be the, glass on the other side. On the street. south side. Yes, not this block of Kirkwood. Yes. Okay. It's across the street. Okay, you saw somebody. Smash yes. glass and jump out of a window? No, no, no. We, we yeah, heard the smashing glass, and longer. then they jumped out of the window onto the roof. That's the shorter house. So they were on the second floor and jumped and ran that way. Okay. Did you hear gunshots or anything? Well, we've heard, heard some, some freaking well, sketchy, we sketchy stuff. 50 to 09. Your caller observed a house on the south side of the block. Heard glass smash and saw a subject jump from the window under the roof of another house. Someone breaking through a window and running across rooftops like Spider-Man on a Father's Day evening in a quiet residential area is odd enough, but nothing can prepare the officers for what happens next. See if you can find phone numbers, attempt to make contact with anybody inside those houses that can advise if they've had any houses broken into and or saw or heard anything suspicious. Shots, shots fired, shots fired. Nine desk, I, I don't know where the shots are coming from, but they're just to the east of us. Officers on scene, answer up. I need squad numbers, make sure everybody's okay. And within 10 minutes, another shot rings out. This time, it's closer to a different pair of officers, one street over from the first. So you want to keep that, keep your gun up like this. And you can use the garage. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, that's okay. Make sure everybody's okay. All right. Watch her back. That's good. Let's back on the other side of the way. Come on. Keep an eye out. 66 and Barris from South Point here. Good. We just released our guy. Come on. All right. I want your help for this. I need everybody here. Call mutual aid for anybody that's got an officer available. I don't know where the shots are coming from, but that's the second shot that was just fired at us. Oddly, this second shot happens almost immediately after the officer shines his flashlight beam on the detached garage in front of him, which in his report, he claimed was in the direction he thought he heard something. Officers are now advised to wait for the South Shore Joint Tactical Unit's armored vehicle to respond with heavy-duty protection gear for the officers, as it's clear someone is shooting, if not at the officers themselves themselves, then very close to them. Before it can arrive, however, a third shot rings out. It's got to be somebody that had a pretty damn good angle because literally the shot fired right when I got out of my squad car and then the second shot as soon as we started moving. Huh? Did the shot whistle past you? I don't I didn't hear it whistle past me. That's the thing. I don't know how if they shot high, if you just shot quick, I have no idea. But the first gunshot was immediately... I literally walked around the front corner of my squad there and boom, the shot went off. Then my heart thumping out of my chest. I didn't start my goddamn camera like I should have. I think I, I think I, nine deaths, shots fired, shots fired. He's right in front of us. It's right in front of us. I don't know where he's shooting from. Stay down. A total of at least three shots have been fired in the span of an hour, though this third round marks the final shot officers will hear this evening. The tactical armored vehicle arrives and officers, now fully suited up, begin to canvas the area. They start with the house that witnesses had identified as the one the suspect initially jumped from, a house further confirmed to be the source by a broken attic window. 
which was visible from the street. Glass shards littering the alleyways between this house and the neighboring house confirmed that the suspect indeed broke through the top floor window and leaped to the neighboring house's roofs, heading east before presumably climbing down somewhere. The house in question is a duplex, and officers managed to call the occupants and have them exit the home. They speak with the upstairs renter, as Mira Pendleton first, as she is the occupant with access to the attic, the duplex being divided by floors with separate up and downstairs departments. As Mira states that members of the household had been asleep when officers had called and hadn't heard the attic window shatter, although she did notice the attic door was open when they were evacuating, which was unusual. We talked to your neighbor that lives downstairs. She said it's fine for us to make sure everything's fine in her house. Can we make sure everything is fine in your house? Yes. Where we don't we want to make sure nobody's hurt in there, nothing like Hold that. So would you give us permission to just check? So we're going to check the attic. We want to check yours, the well, lower and the basement to make sure that nobody's hiding. You know, so you guys can see if they go back the inside. Yes. Is that okay? All right. Also living at this duplex with Esmira are her mother, Carrie Jackson, and two teenage sons, Travis and Travell. Travis spoke to police while the rest of his family waited for other officers to finish searching the home. Were you sleeping or anything, or were you? Have you been up? I heard a little loud sound. Carrie Jackson, Esmira's mother, would later confirm to officers that Robert, who is her grandson, and her son Ronnie had indeed visited earlier that day and left before nightfall. Both both she and Asmira confirmed to police that no one else should be in the home and that they had no idea who might have been in the attic, much less jump through the attic window onto the neighbor's roof. With this in mind, officers enter the house and begin searching, clearing the top and bottom floors before honing in on the attic. Calais, hey, police! Anybody in the attic, make yourself known! Police! Anybody in the attic, make yourself known! Second floor complete, moving to attic. After several hours of searching, officers are forced to call off the search, as the glass in the alley remains the only trace of the mysterious roof-jumping shooter. As Mira and her family, as well as the elder lieutenant downstairs, are allowed back in their homes and police leave the area. Little do they know that they will soon be back, in response to yet another bizarre 911 call from this neighborhood. Hey, mom, from work, you tell somebody who's in our attic. We found him in there. Where is, how do I get up? Carlos, uh, do that door. Who's up there with him? My boyfriend. Pulled him out of the attic. A couple had returned home to find a strange man hiding in their attic mere hours after police had called off the search for yet another criminal attic dweller. Hey, I have a firearm. All right, well, don't use it. I'm not going there. I stand at the door right there. Carlos, you stay. I'm not going up there. 36. He's on the porch with another individual. I'm going to be heading up there. Hey, I'm putting my firearm Put your way. Turn around. I just told him, Turn come around. in here. Turn around. I'm trying to come in. Turn around. around. Put your hands behind your back. Suspect up here. Uh, come in through the back over here. Other individual has a firearm. He has it holstered. I'll go put it up as soon just, as I can get past. Put your hand behind your back. Put your hand behind your back. Huh? Put your hand behind your back. I didn't talk to you. I'm just going to take on it. on the porch, man. What's your name? I'm Robert Turner, man. Who's the hood now? Robert Turner, man. Robert Turner, man? Or Robert man, Turner? Yeah, man, my leg is broke. All right, well, we're going to get you out downstairs, okay? He's got a firearm right here. He's a homeowner. He's got a firearm behind me. This individual's got to come downstairs. Yeah, we'll get you downstairs. He's on the porch behind me. This one right here. Hey, this way. Downstairs. He's just going to have to hop. Just hop, dude. Hop down. Come on, man. Let me get in front of him. I got it. I got it. I can hop down. Let him trust us out the window here. Huh? He's fine. He's fine. No, I'm not. We got some. Uh, see that? Maybe upstairs. Might be an idea. Thirty-six deaths. They have one in custody. Says his name is Robert Turner. Uh, requesting an ambulance for a possible broken leg. You a search? No, I have not. Stop. Just hold still. You got anything on you we need to know about? No, sir. Look at my leg. You got any weapons or anything? No, sir. You got any weapons up in that attic? No, sir. Huh? Where do you live? Uh, huh? Carpenter. Do you live on Carpenter? Hey. Uh, Did you hurt your leg or jumping out a window? Were you jumping out of a window or jumping across roofs last okay. night? Uh, I had my leg come across here yesterday. 
What's up, I'm on my, I'm on my, it's my grandmother. Uh -huh. my leg. What is, what's your first name, Robert? <coughs> yeah. And your last name is Turner? Yes, sir. What's your middle initial? Uh, can you please take these? Hang on, what's your middle initial? The cuffs ain't coming off, my friend. Sorry. Yeah. What's your middle name? Yeah. L. And what's your birthday? Best to be honest with us. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh my God. Bro, you got to chill because yeah. guess what? What's your address? Out, my man. Yeah. Where you stay at? Where you stay at, bro? Huh? Across the way. Yeah, what does across the way mean? Oh, that's Carpenter right there. You stay on Carpenter? Yeah. I think I've seen him before. This house here? Were you running around last night on a rooftop? No, I came across yeah. the thing. Mm. It's clear by this point that the man is Cousin Robert, who was mentioned previously by Travis and was over at the family home the prior day. Why he broke the window out of his grandmother's attic and ran across the rooftops is unknown. Also a mystery is why he decided to break into a neighbor's house to hide in yet another attic. Whether as Mira or Carrie knew Robert had been in the attic and hadn't left the home is unclear. After you crawled out of the attic? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't Stop. crab. Don't crab. Have to get up in that yeah, attic and check for a weapon. Yeah. This would have been the, I think I've seen him before. I don't cause no problems, sir. I know. Thank you. My leg broke. Look at oh, my leg. How'd you get his leg broke? Yeah. All right, I see why you're doing that. Hold up here, hold up here. What you got? What we got? We got drugs up in here. Is it fentanyl or crack? What you got? No, I do them. Them personal use. Hey, is it, I, I don't care if it's personal. Is it fentanyl or crack? I don't know, I think they ecstasy. Huh? Ecstasy? Yeah. Now they're using that. Yeah. That's not ecstasy, bro. It's not? Maybe. Well, we'll see. Maybe. Yeah, I use this. It should be in my system and everything. You got a weapon on you? No, sir. Did you have a weapon on you? 36 to 106. I don't think anybody's here that was here this morning. <laughs> Going to need a ladder or something to get into that attic, check for a weapon. You live at the homes? The ambulance is here. We'll take you to the hospital, okay? You're under arrest, though, okay? So six where? Steps, six steps. What oh. is I'm under arrest for? Well, for starters, I mean, you're in somebody's attic. Yeah, you shouldn't be, right? I'm so. sorry, man. I don't, I don't want, I mean, I, I know. I, I know. climbed on the top porch, man. I got it. Well, you asked, right? Robert, Robert. Yeah, so. Robert, Robert. Robert. Huh? No link in the middle. No black. No yep, no one's mad. Yeah. We're just trying to figure out what's going on, is all. And let's get your leg looked at, all right? It sounds like. The attic is up here, yeah. Agenton's up there with the homeowner. I came home if my bottom door was open and all the stuff from the attic was on the floor. So you just got home? You just got home. Just got off work and all the sh was from the attic was on the floor. And Mindy's like, there's an animal in the roof. And no, who, who, he started... Who said that? Mindy, my girlfriend. Because we came up at the same time. Oh, okay. So we're thinking it's an animal and he said, no, my name's Robert. Oh, sh there's a dude in my roof. Okay. Did he have anything... No, no, once he heard us in here, he said, my name's Robert, I'm in the attic. Then he tried to come down, I didn't know what the f to expect. He said he lives right there. Have you seen that, ever seen this I've never before? seen him before. I, well, I could have, but I couldn't tell, he was so covered in I don't know. Oh, man. On paper for hit and run involved great bodily harm, hit and run involved injury, and homicide by dangerous weapon. As was just mentioned on the officer's radio, it turns out that Robert has a serious criminal history. He was convicted of homicide by negligent handling of a weapon or explosive in 2007 and served eight years in prison. At the time of this incident, he was on probation and, despite his family claiming he didn't live with them, the Milwaukee Department of Corrections had their address down as his place of residence. So you see the insulation all over the floor, what do you do next? I immediately looked up because I knew that's where it came from. Okay. Like none of this was on the floor. So I knew something was in the attic. We thought it was like a raccoon or something, but then he started screaming, my name's Robert, my name's Robert. I said, I have a gun, get your down here. Nothing's missing. So you must've just went right up into the attic. You didn't touch anything. He came in here with my dog. Was the dog barking when you got, I mean. The dog barks at me if I come home. The yeah. dog barks at me if I go to the bathroom. So really nothing suspicious with the dog then when you came home? No. Yeah. Got it, okay. Jeffrey, she says you leave this door open at night sometimes? Yeah, we let, so the dog can see outside. So that door to the door to the porch is unlocked? Yeah, we usually leave the porch door open so the dog can, I never expected anything like this in this neighborhood. That's why I love cutting it. Right. <laughs> no, that's quite a shock when you get home. 
So what was he asking for? He said he would give you money to help him out? Or? He asked me to call his grandmother. He said he'd give me $300 on Friday if I didn't call the police. Police then began the arduous process of tracking down the gun they believe Robert was shooting the night before, starting in the attic before moving to the surrounding yards. I got a metal detector. Oh. Now he had plenty of time to bury it, that's for sure. Eventually, they locate the firearm in a fittingly bizarre place, consistent with the theme of the rest of this case. Oh, in the grill? Get the f*** out of here. Nice. Bet, dude. Way to climb up in the attic, dude. <laughs> 106. 106, Yeah, we located the firearm. According to the complaint, police later found a spent shell casing in the area that matched the gun that was located in the charcoal grill. And, like Robert, the firearm was also covered in bits of insulation. As for the chalky, multicolored pills found in the baggie from Robert's pocket, the complaint referred to them as ecstasy. Robert Turner was subsequently charged with first-degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon, possession of a firearm by a felon, and armed burglary. And he remains in custody currently. His initial plea of not guilty was entered in September, and his next court date is set for early November of 2023. He maintains that he wasn't shooting at police, though gave no clear alternative explanation for his actions. He also didn't have an explanation for his obsession with addicts.